Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the basics about how to get started with the Solidity programming language so that you can become a blockchain developer. I'm gonna show you how to write your first Ethereum smart contract, and we're gonna do it all in your browser. You won't have to download anything or get anything installed on your computer in order to get started. It's gonna be really fast and easy. And you don't have to know anything about blockchains. You don't have to know anything about writing smart contracts or much really of what even they are in order to follow along with this video. It's really designed to be just an introduction. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below that really helps these videos get found so that more people can become blockchain developers. And also, I'm considering turning this video into a series about Solidity, so if you're interested in that, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know if you want to see more videos about this topic. Solidity is the main programming language for writing smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. It's a contract-oriented language, uh, which basically means that you know smart contracts are the main way that you organize code and like store data and write all of your programming logic. And, you know, it's a high-level language for implementing these smart contracts. It looks a lot like uh, JavaScript and, you know, Python and C++, as you see right here. And it's used to run on the Ethereum virtual machine, which is basically, you know, uh, the thing that runs the code on the Ethereum blockchain. So Solidity is uh, statically typed um, as opposed to a dynamically typed language, and it supports stuff like inheritance, uh, libraries, and lots of other stuff. So enough of talking about Solidity, let's actually jump in and start writing some Solidity code. This is a website that allows you to write Solidity smart contracts uh, in your browser, and you know it has a text editor here, and allows you to compile them and deploy them and run them. And that's exactly what I'm going to use for this tutorial. Uh, you won't have to download anything on your computer. You won't have to install anything. You can just visit this website um, to use Remix, and we'll write the smart contracts that way. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here to this browser folder. Um, you, know, you can see the file browser over here. This is um, some basic smart contracts that come preloaded inside of this uh, IDE. I'm just going to create a new one here. I think I can just create uh, a new file. This will be a Solidity file. Uh, we'll call it my contract and we're going to write a smart contract inside of here um, i'll do this by first declaring the version of solidity that we want to use we just do that like this we say pragma solidity and i'm going to use a caret to specify a version greater than the one we want to use and i'm going to say version 0 .4, uh, 4, uh, 0.4.24 and i'm going to end each line like this with a semicolon and next, I'm actually going to declare the smart contract. So before I do that, I'll explain a little bit more about what a smart contract is. Um, you know, a smart contract is code that gets executed on the blockchain. In this case, this is going to be the Ethereum uh, blockchain since we're using, you know, Solidity for this Ethereum smart contract. And this smart contract is kind of be kind of like a microservice out on the web. It's going to be accessible to everyone on the blockchain. They'll be able to, you know, see this smart contract. They'll be able to use it. Um, they'll be able to read and write data with it and actually, you know, execute any code that we write inside of here. So it's going to be public. And that's kind of why I call it like a microservice. It's more, it's more than just a class, like in an object-oriented system or something like that. It's actually something that's publicly accessible. So it's going to look something like a class, though, because that's how we're going to actually, you know, uh, keep all the code inside of here. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll, call, we'll start by saying contract say my contract and I'm open this with some curly braces and it'll notice that the uh, editor closes this automatically for us which is really nice and what I'm going to do first is just show you how to read and write a value from a variable inside of here now like I said uh, earlier solidity is a statically typed language so we're going to actually have to declare the type uh, the data type of the variable we want to store so in this case, we're just going to store a string, and we'll declare a string, and we'll say value. Now let me explain something about this value. This value is going to represent, uh, you know, a variable that belongs to this entire smart contract. So this isn't like a local variable. It's actually a variable that this co entire contract will know about. And what that means with a smart contract is that data is actually going to get stored on the blockchain in storage. So 
if we set this value, we're actually going to be writing data to the blockchain. That's different from a local variable that I might just you know set inside of a function that would be you know local to that function scope um, and would you know disappear instantly once that function is called. Instead, this value is actually going to be you know stored on the blockchain. So let's create a way to uh, just read this value. So I can do this by writing a function in Solidity like this. We just start with the function keyword. And I say, I'm just gonna call the function get. It's gonna get this value. And we'll say, we'll just open the braces for now. I'm gonna write some more code here in a second. We can see some warnings coming up, but I'll fill this out more. We'll say, just return value, okay? And that's a really basic way to do this. I'm gonna add some more to this. I'm gonna say this is also public, all right? Which basically is setting the visibility of this function. That's what that's called in Solidity, is setting the visibility. So that knows that this function can be called by anyone who has access to the smart contract on the blockchain, not just inside this contract. So I'm also going to set a return value, say returns a string, all right? That makes our warning disappear down here. And that just tells our function that we're always going to return a, a string data type. And we know that's the same uh, data type as value because we declared it here. Now I'm also going to look at this warning down here which says uh, this function state mutability can be restricted. So basically what this is saying is um, in Solidity now, in this newest version, um, since we're not actually changing this value, we're not changing anything inside this function, we want to add an additional uh, modifier here which just says view. All right, and that makes that warning go away. So now I'm going to set uh, a new function or write a new function that's called set. Let's say function. It's going to allow us to set this value. I'll say set and I'll say string. I'll say value. All right. And I'm also going to you know set the visibility of this, of this function. We're going to call it public, which means that anyone will be able to set this value on the blockchain. And I'll say value equals uh, this value that we're passing in. All right. Let me explain that. I'm using value as an underscore here because I want to differentiate between this value that's getting passed in and the value uh, that's referenced here. Now inside of here, you know, this value uh, without an underscore is referencing this, you know, state variable that we set up earlier that's actually getting stored to the blockchain. And this value, Solidity knows that it's just a local variable because I passed it in and I, uh, you know, prepended it with an underscore like this. And also notice that I declare the uh, data type of the function argument. We need that inside Solidity because it needs to know the type of the data that's getting passed in. All right, and now we have a way to actually uh, read this value and set it. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to set this value uh, whenever you, we deploy the smart contract or whenever it's generated for the first time. And I'm gonna do this with a constructor function. So if you're familiar with other programming languages where you might write, you know, classes or something like that, you might be familiar with a constructor function, which is basically a function that's called whenever this contract is instantiated, or in this case, it's going to be whenever the contract is created, or whenever the smart contract is deployed to the blockchain. And in the newer versions of Solidity, uh, we do that like this. We say constructor, and we just, you know, say it's public. And we can, you know, write code inside of this constructor that gets called whenever this contract is created. Um, and we'll say, you know, value. We'll just set it as, uh, you know, my value. All right. And there we go. So that's a complete smart contract that, you know, sets this value whenever it's deployed. So it will have some sort of default value. And then we'll have, you know, some functions that allow us to read that value from the blockchain. And then we'll have a function that allows us to create that value as well. So now I can go to this tab over here in Remix and I can compile it. We can uh, select the compiler version and I'm going to say, let's see here, 0 0.4.25. We'll start to compile it and see what happens. All right. And now what I'm going to do is actually run the smart contract. You'll see some options over here. Uh, I'm just going to say JavaScript virtual machine, which basically what that's going to do is give us a test blockchain in the browser. 
Um, so we don't have to connect to a blockchain of any kind. We can just, you know, compile this and run it and deploy it inside of our browser, which is pretty cool. And it's going to give us some, you know, free Ethereum accounts over here. I don't worry if you don't quite understand what all these values mean just yet. That's okay. I can explain those more. Um, but for now, we're going to just keep my contract and we're going to deploy it. All right, there we go. It's deployed. So now uh, what I can do is click on this little down arrow here and we can see the functions that are available to us in the smart contract. We can see the set function and the get function. You know, these are the functions that we created over here. The set function is going to allow us to update it and the get functions allow us to get it. So I'll click get and we should probably see the uh, value that we created inside the constructor. We set it here. So let's get it. All right, there we go. It's my value. And we can see some activity in this uh, log down here. We can see that we, there's a call to mycontract.get. And now let's set it. So I'm going to enter uh, the quotations for the string and I'm going to say new value. All right. Let's click set. All right, and we can see that worked. So you can see the transaction history over here. Let's get the value. All right, it's new value. There we go. That's a complete smart contract that allows you to get and set a value on the blockchain. Now let me explain what's going on here. This is a list of transactions that are occurring on the Ethereum blockchain. So the Ethereum blockchain is made up of you know bundles of records that are chained together into blocks that are make up the blockchain and you know the basic units of all those uh, blocks are these transactions so we can see uh, transaction receipts um, we can actually click the down arrows here and we can see all the details of those transaction receipts and i've got other videos on this channel that kind of talk about that in detail if you want to know more about that just feel free to look for those all right that's it guys that's how you can write your first smart contract in the solidity programming language uh, again, that's supposed to be just a high-level overview of Solidity and how to get started writing your first smart contracts and using the programming language itself and using the Remix IDE in your browser to get started easily without having to download any tools or anything like that. So I hope you all found this video helpful. I'm thinking about potentially, you know, doing more videos on Solidity by itself. I've got several videos on this channel already where I you know, kind of show you how to build dApps and, you know, write big smart contracts and things like that. But I thought about doing some more videos where I just focus on Solidity by itself and the basics and, you know, kind of walking you through how to get involved with the Solidity programming language. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to thumbs up the video below and also leave a comment down below if you're interested in more Solidity videos. Um, yeah, so just let me know, guys. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.